So out here this afternoon, we're having our field day for the Iowa Pest Resistant Management Plan. So what this is, as you can see behind me, is we're really walking through a demonstration of different herbicide programs and herbicide strategies. So we're looking at, do we have a pre-emergence? Do we not have a pre-emergence? Do we have a light pre-emergence program or robust? And then we're also looking at some different post-emergent application processes and programs intermixed with those. So what we're really doing is looking at as a good herbicide management program, you should have a multi-pronged approach. You shouldn't just rely on one group, herbicide group, one mode of action. You should look at a whole bunch of those and have a very integrated management process going in there. And that's some of the things that we're showing back here. It's just some different examples of what we've got out there. We are sitting alongside basically the, the middle, right? The north uh, heads this way. So we're sitting on the middle block. So what we tried to do with this site is break it up into an extend flex, which would be the top. So if you uh, put the end towards you and, and lay the sheet uh, long this way, the extend treatments are right here that we're gonna run through and the E3 treatments are right there. And here's our dividing line, which basically runs horizontal down the middle of the- So the main goal of today is um, definitely our, our job or our task is to continue to elevate awareness. So awareness of weed resistance, also pest resistance in general, insect, fungi, etc. cetera. Um, so days like today are all about how do we communicate with the local uh, farm population? How do we uh, get them to recognize and understand the challenges uh, that we face uh, every day, certainly neighbors and, and within the area. Um, and there's no better way to do it than a field day, um, serve them some lunch, right? And, and get them to think and stop for a minute about hey, the challenges that we face from a weed management standpoint. Yeah, so I've been on this farm for probably working with the crop protection side of things probably since the early 2000s. And this is kind of where, where I started having trouble with killing mare's tail with Roundup. It wasn't this particular field, but it was one of them that's right next to it. And I'm just gonna let it at that, like right next <laughs> to it, okay? So, um, so, so that's kind of where the epicenter from a from a mare's tail uh, standpoint started from, and uh, but there, there's pressure out here as you, as you can see here where I'm standing at. Um, I, I don't know. It's it's uh, it's a good place to have a plot. It's close to town. You can see it. Um, gets a little wet down in there, and we'll talk. I think about maybe some of the reasons why some of the beans are a little bit thin, maybe on the lower end versus yep. versus the upper end here, I guess. But uh, yep. but plenty of weed pressure, good place to have uh, this kind of demonstration and it works well from, from that standpoint. In 2019, one of the things that we wanted to do out here in Harrison County was we thought, you know, everyone says that there's weed resistance, but there's our actual weed resistance here in this county. So we did a survey of random samples and some individuals who called us and said, hey, we've got weeds that think they might be resistant. So we took those, sent them to the lab at Iowa State University. Dr. Prashant Jha ran those with him and his team. And they came back with some of the different shall we say resistances that are around here in Harrison County. We saw very robust resistance to herbicide group two, herbicide group five, as well as herbicide group nine, and that would be your Roundup. So we saw that. We also saw some resistance beginning to form to some group 27s, as well as some group 14 herbicides in there as well. So not at to the extent as the other ones, but we did see some of that going on there. So then we took those samples again in 2020, and we're gonna look at those, see, see what we come up with. And really what it does is it drives home the point that herbicide resistance isn't something that's a mythical thing that you can read in a magazine and it's only in Nebraska, Illinois, Indiana. Nope, it's right here in our backyard and we're showing these farmers here that this resistance happens and it occurs right here in their fields. So what I did is I got between those, the sets of flags out there, I started on that on the east side to the far set of flags, I did three drill widths with the drill at what I thought was about a 50 pound rate, okay? Um, and then I doubled the rate on the next three passes, which is 
which is next to the white flag. So, so we've got two rates of cover crops down there. Um, I was worried because they, some of it came up in the fall and I would say most of it maybe sprouted, but wasn't even, I, I mean, maybe it was germinated. I don't, I don't know. Uh, but we had a heck of a time even seeing it in the spring early um, before we kind of got busy in the field. But it, it did green up and it did grow and we got, a, we got a pretty good stand actually. So you can even plant that stuff pretty late. It's a long-term um, scenario. Um, these weed populations are always evolving. But the most important thing we can probably accomplish is for people to recognize it and then develop a comprehensive plan and like always, execute your plan. Stick to it, right? Don't give up, don't shortcut, don't, um, don't think short-term economic versus long-term impact, right? It's a good, diligent plan. Um, and you can be really successful, and our plot, our plot shows that today, right? A comprehensive, multi-mode approach. Those are by far our cleanest trials. Whereas when we try to cut corners and really reduce trips or modes of action those are messy plots and it's just a very simple uh, simplistic uh, view for all of us to understand a weedy field versus a non a non weedy field well the only other thing that i would add is that really this program the iowa pesticides management plan is based on communities coming together farmers are notorious for being individuals they're all individual entities their own businesses and things like that and they run their weeds the same way their weed resistance and their weed control all kind of goes in amongst themselves. But we need to try to break that mold and understand that people can talk to one another. They can understand that my weeds might not be as bad as yours. We can share some of those management strategies so that we as a group, as a community, can work better to uh, further ourselves in controlling or reducing some of this resistance that's developing really fast. Because we've only got so many tools in the toolbox. And Roundup is probably a tool that's closer towards the end of its life cycle than its beginning. I don't think I'm speaking out of the box to say that, but we have 2,4-D, we have dicamba and other ones like that, that if we just run them the same way we did glyphosate, we won't have those for the future. So again, a community-based approach in which we can all work together is something we're really striving for here out here in Harrison County.